What's up, people? Happy Tuesday. Hope all of you are having a great day. Um, before I get into this review, a um, couple of things. First of all, the podcast was amazing. We had a great time. Shout out to Emily and Cody, the host of Weekdays with Murph. Um, the podcast was great. If you want to uh, listen to the podcast, you can go um, to blogtalk.com, blog radio, blogtalkradio.com slash weekdays with Murph. It's blogtalkradio.com slash weekdays with Murph. Um, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience to be on their podcast. We had a great time talking about General Hospital, the upcoming storylines. It was it was a great it was a great conversation. So if you want to listen to it, it's up there, blogtalkradio.com slash weekdays with Murph. It was really great. I can't wait to do it again. Um, on to other news. The big news coming out of General Hospital right now is Rebecca Hurst. Rebecca Hurst is in contract negotiations with General Hospital right now. And from what I understand currently, they're at a standstill. Negotiations, they're at an impasse. It's basically 50-50 on whether or not the character of Elizabeth Weber, Weber is going to survive. You already know how I feel. <laughs> you know how I feel. Listen, if they get rid of Elizabeth Weber, bye bye birdie. That's all I have to say. I'm I, I need a break from this bitch. Um. Anyway, let's get into this episode. Maxi, I have to talk about Maxi. Maxie is the greatest friend you can ever have. Let me tell you that. Because she's a mighty big person. Her and Nathan decided to move in together. They decided to live together. But she's also going to continue to allow, you know, Lulu to live in the apartment and stuff. Because she actually came up with a good idea about her and Nathan getting their own place. You know, her moving out of her apartment and them just getting a brand new place. I like that idea because her apartment, you know, it got a lot of memories in there, you know, past relationships. That's where her and Spinelli had sex. And, you know, that's where they used to live at together. So it's like, you know, you need a new place, you know, so her and Nathan can have new memories. But they decided to kind of stay in the apartment for a while, you know, for Lulu's sake, since Lulu's still living there and she's still, you know, going through the divorce with Dante, getting over that. So... Lulu, they tell Lulu the news and she dropped her glass and Lulu was saying how, you know, she's happy for them. But, you know, it reminded her when her and Dante, you know, talked about living together and got married, you know, about the past. And, you know, here's my thing. Maxie's a damn good friend, because if that was me and I just got me and my me and my girlfriend decided to live together in. I had my homeboy living with me with his son or something like that. Listen, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out of here. That's the way it is. Like, I'm sorry, but me and my girl just moved in together. You got to go. I mean, I'm not going to put you out on the street that day or tomorrow, but I'm going to give you a time stable on when you got to get the hell out. I'm just saying. I think that's what Maxie should do. Tell me if that's not fair. It ain't like Lulu can't afford an apartment or something because she can and she got Windermere, but I understand Maxie's reasoning for her not wanting her to live at Windermere right now because you got to take a launch across the harbor every time you leave Windermere. So I get that. But I think it's fair. I mean, her and Nathan are living together now. They decided to take their relationship to the next level. And I feel like four is a crowd. That's just too much. And that apartment ain't that but so big. So I would at least give her a time table. I mean, I understand, you know, that's her friend. She wants to be there for her. And Lulu, you know, she just signed divorce papers last week. So I get it. You know what I mean? I definitely get it. She needs friends right now. You know, she needs that support. I get that. And me, I would give a friend all the support that in the world. But from a distance, you, I mean, seriously, you got to get the hell out at some point. I'm just saying. You ain't got to leave today. You ain't got to leave tomorrow. But, you know, within the next couple of weeks, you need to start looking for a new place. I'm just saying. You know, I'm trying to be alone with my chick. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's how I would be. You know what I mean? I don't want to come home and can't even get freaky on the couch because your baby crying in the next room. Uh, no. And y'all could walk in at any given time. Hell no. You got to go home or get the hell out. I mean, I give you a month. You got one month with me. After that, you got to skip fucking daddle. I'm just saying skedaddle. That's, you know, that's just me. Um, 
So anyway, but Maxie is a damn good friend, though. I will say that. And Nathan, he had that look on his face at the end, like, what the fuck did I just get into? Because they was just sitting there throwing popcorn at each other. Nathan, you went for a rude awakening, homeboy. Um, but that was a nice thing of Maxie, though. You know, to be a support, <laughs> to be a support system. Um, so anyway. Julian and Alexis were at home. Ava stopped by to drop off some butt ugly piece, <laughs> some present. Um, that's when Ava got the, I mean, Alexis got the call about Sam. And here go Julian calling Jason a son of a bitch, talking about Sam was better off with him dead. Julian, shut up. You just found out you had a daughter three years ago. Shut up. Sam, Jason been in her life way longer than she even knew that you were her pappy. So please shut up. Like, seriously, you don't even know their relationship, so shut the fuck up. And he's the father of your grandson, so whether you like it or not, he's back. They're still married, and that's the father of your grandson, so like it. You ain't got to like it, but you damn sure got to put up with it, so shut up. Like, seriously, Julian act like, I swear, I do not like this version of Julian. He acts like just because he's out of the mob now, he's so self-righteous. It's like, shut the fuck up. Just three years ago, just the, you know, like three... Two, three years ago, your fucking son was shot in front of you because of your mob dealings. So please shut up. You are in no place to judge nobody. So keep quiet. Um. So anyway, Ava was admiring Julian's new lifestyle, whatever, his clean lifestyle. In my opinion, I don't see Ava getting out the mob. I just feel like there's a part of her that is accustomed to that lifestyle. A big part of her like She could say she want out all she want. I mean, she keeps saying she want out and stuff. She want a straight life. Well, bitch, people in hell want ice water. I don't mean it's going to happen, but I'm just saying. You can't always get what you want. And I just feel like she's not going to like the straight life too much. Because it's going to be a matter of time before she jump right back into the mob. Look at Sonny. Sonny left the mob in 2008. Handed all everything over to Jason. How long did that last? He ain't even last a whole year. He ain't even last a half a year before he was back in the mob dealings, dealing with them Russians. Come on now. Ava loves money and power just like the next motherfucker, so she can miss me with all that. Um, I get that she wants to do this for her daughter or whatever. Okay. I'll believe it when I see it. But she has to get out from under Paul and Raj and whoever this Dixon person is first before you could do make any moves. Um, maybe it will happen. Maybe it won't. Who knows? It seemed to me like everybody on this show was just having a drink tonight. Everybody wanted to open up a bottle of wine or a bottle of liquor. I was like, what's up with all these alkies today? It was a lot of alcohol consumption in this episode. Paul drinking. Alexis come home. She opening up a bottle of wine. Uh, um, who else? Maxie and Nathan and all them drinking. I was like, damn, everybody a lush in this episode. Anna went to the bar to drink. I was like, okay. I mean, I'm not mad at you. You know, you need to drink once in a while with all this stress. And boy, did all of them have some stress in their life today. Um. So anyway, Sam and Jason, you know, Jason was at her bedside or whatever. Elizabeth comes her punk ass in here. Um. Looking like Squidward. Um, no, let me stop. But anyway, she come up in here. Sam sets the record straight. Jake did not push her down the steps. Elizabeth, of course, was rejoicing. Whatever. Um, so anyway, Monica comes over. She offers Elizabeth a permanent place to live at the quarter main mansion. I was looking at Monica with a side eye. Like, bite your tongue, Monica. Don't you dare. Don't you dare invite the devil in your house. What is wrong with you, Monica? Because I feel like Elizabeth has always wanted to be a Quartermain. She always wanted to marry Jason because she got Quartermain status after that. But um, I'm glad she never went into the Quartermain family. Good. She don't belong there. Um, if she ever do move in that house, if I was Tracy, I'd be watching the silver. I'm just saying, you know, pawn shops are big businesses. Um, but yeah, I was looking at Monica like, bite your damn tongue, Monica. Don't you ever, that's blasphemy, first of all, to sit there and say you could stay at my house. Uh, no, she can't. Um, I mean, I understand that you want to be generous or whatever, but 
if you want to be generous, at least give her a couple dollars for a hotel. I mean, you ain't got to invite the trick in your house. I mean, after all the hell she done caused in your family, I'm just saying. AJ, Jason, lying about your grandsons, I'm just saying, to name a few. Um. So anyway, um, Elizabeth talking to Jason or whatever about his chemistry with Sam. Bitch, you just now realizing that they got chemistry. Hello, they're married. Elizabeth aggravating. She needs to stop the thirst. I do kind of get a feel that Elizabeth is about to hit a nervous breakdown. I have a feeling. By her crying scene and stuff like that, she just seemed like she about to have a nervous breakdown. But this time, you know, it's not like the nervous breakdown that she faked when she tried to get with Lucky. I think this might be a real one. Uh, whew, she got some tricks. Um, so anyway, she had went to her house or whatever. The house had burned down. And she found that old picture. She found a picture of her and Jason. I said, look like that picture survived. Um, so Anna was in Paul's office, and she actually told him the truth. I love this cat and mouse game that Anna and Paul are playing. I love it. It's like the perfect game. So he was telling her about his daughter, Susan, and how him and his daughter, they don't have a relationship. Um, And Paul is distraught over it. So he called Ava for a little booty call when Anna turned down his drink offer. Anna was at the bar or whatever having a drink and notice that when Anna walked out the bar when she walked out of the floating rib it seemed to me somebody was watching her somebody was behind her mind you she was talking about the possibility of Duke being alive how she hoped that he was still alive what if that was Duke what if they were hinting at that maybe you know Ian Buchanan is not really coming back to the show but what if they kind of hint that to kind of throw it at the viewers you know what I mean because somebody was watching her when she walked out that bar um who knows? Maybe it was the ghost of Duke. Never know. Um, but I love it, though. Anna's definitely playing cat and mouse with Paul, and I'm enjoying it thoroughly. Um, so, yeah, this episode was pretty good. It was it was it was good. Um, I think that's everything, though. But I do agree. Jake does need some help. That boy needs to be in Shady Brook somewhere. He needs some help bad. Seriously, he needs counseling. Um, they need to do something with that boy. Um, and it was good that, you know, Alexis was cordial to Jason. She was nice to him, you know, for a change. And she was honest with him about her past feelings towards him, which I felt was big of her. Because it's about time. Alexis get off her high horse, too. With all the dangerous men she married. And, you know, fathered kids with, you know, had kids with. But um, anyway, yeah, it was a good episode. So yeah, like I said, if you want to see, if you want to listen to the podcast, go to blogtalkradio.com slash weekdays with Murph to listen to the podcast. Um, it should be the February 6th uh, episode. It's titled GH Recaps. So if you want to listen to it, go listen to it. Um, if you have, if you did listen to it, let me know in the comments what you thought. Um, so anyway, I hope you all have a great night. See you all tomorrow. Have a great night.